So please let me begin by uh, thanking you for joining the data site open hours um, and also um, to apologize for the fact that I'm not there with you. Um, unfortunately, it is um, past midnight in Tokyo and uh, hopefully I'm tucked up in bed asleep while you're listening to this. Um, but if you want to reach out to me after um, this presentation, then please feel free to do so through the usual uh, data site support channel. Um, so um, I, I should also introduce myself. My name is Rory Edmonds. I'm the samples community manager. And uh, today I will be talking to you um, a little bit more about the new uh, partnership between IGSN and data site. Um, so the first half of this presentation is really just to, to introduce the partnership and then uh, the second part I will talk a little bit more about what it, uh, it means to current data site members. Um, uh, so beginning with a, a little bit of background, as some of you may know, um, a, a, a few years ago, uh, IGSN. So IGSN was uh, originally the International Geo Sample Number, is now the International Generic Sample Number. But the uh, IGSN organization uh, basically decided to conduct a study looking into um, its sustainability and future. Uh, this, uh, the IGSN 2040 project, was funded by the Sloan Foundation and resulted in a report that basically recommended that IGSN look to partner with uh, similar organizations within the sphere. Um, and particularly it recommended exploring a partnership with DataSite. This was uh, unanimously agreed by the IGSN members um, at one of its annual meetings. And in May last year, uh, IGSN approached data site and it was agreed to tr to look into developing a partnership. This was formalized with an agreement um, in October of last year and led then to approaching the Sloan Foundation again for a second grant in order to realize the uh, IGSN 2040 vision and to execute it. And this has resulted in uh, myself, Rory Edmonds, and my, uh, my colleague here, Cody, Cody Ross, who will be speaking to you in a, in a few moments, um, to join data sites. So I uh, joined in mid-February as the samples community manager, and Cody joined at the beginning of March as my sort of technical counterpart. Um, so he's an application support engineer. And our job is really to um, make sure that the transition um, goes ahead smoothly and also to promulgate uh, the usage of IGSN IDs um, as we move forward. Um, and why is this important to DataSite? Well, uh, hopefully a number of you will be familiar with the strategic plan um, that was re recently released. So the strategic plan for 2022 to 2025. And in particular, pillar three, which says that um, about uh, identifying and connecting all resource types held by research organizations globally. And in particular, an objective of that, that um, pillar is uh, to take intentional proactive steps as the trusted community PID service partner for research organizations identifying research outputs and resources and build services and strategies that support these use cases. And um, on the basis of the partnership uh, that you can see that some of the activities that have been earmarked for 2022 include seeking proactive engagement with specific inclu uh, communities, including the samples community, onboarding IGSN allocating agents as members, helping grow registrations, and transitioning the IGSN members to use data site infrastructure. So this is all embedded within the um, strategic plan and activities. So who are the, the sort of the main actors within the, the partnership? Well, of, 
of course, there's uh, data site itself, which is providing the IGSN ID uh, registration services and supporting the ongoing sustainability of the uh, IGSN infrastructure. Uh, IGSN uh, will continue to exist, um, and uh, Kirsten Leonard, the, the president of the of the IGSN, will will talk a little bit more about that. And their role it will be to uh, sort of implement and promote standard methods for identifying, citing, and locating physical samples with confidence. The uh, executive boards of the two organizations have established a partnership steering group, the PSG, and this oversees the relationship described in the agreement between the organizations. It's, it's a formal advisory body that it will advises data site on the needs of the samples community and obviously coordinates with, with data site steering and working groups um, uh, as regards samples requirements. And then there's myself, my role as the samples community manager, and I'm responsible for coordinating with directly with the, the partnership steering group and with the broader IGSN community to support uh, adoption, advocacy and implementation activities. Um, so the, the, the partnership and the Sloan um, grant sort of outlines that there are two uh, main phases to um, this, this um, endeavor and the first one is the the transition itself so this is really uh, technical in the main uh, for transferring the IGSN IDs underneath the the data site framework and so you can see the steps here it's about developing technical transition plans implementation steps we need to transition the the current IGSN handle server so that it's managed by data site um, we need to supply um, uh, metadata mappings and support and best practice documentation. And this is uh, assisted by two partnership working groups looking at metadata and namespaces. And we also need then uh, obviously to, once uh, everything is ready, launch the new uh, IGSN ID registration uh, both for existing data site members and the current IGSN allocating agents. And we need to ensure that everything that already exists as an IGSN ID, so all of the current handles are aliased uh, to uh, IGSN IDs registered within the DOI system. And then there's a, a, a large engagement element supporting all of the above. So we need to coordinate with the, with the uh, IGSN allocating agents to assist them to a joint data site, communicate the, the timeline, the transition process, what have you, and generally support the transition and onboarding efforts. Um, uh, and uh, lastly, uh, really report, we, we obviously need to report on the outcomes um, in particular to, um, to the Sloan Foundation as, as the, the funder of the project. And one thing to note here is that we're, we're truly trying to make sure that the IGSM branding is maintained um, within this uh, transition. And then the second stage is, um, is, look, is scaling. So this is uh, a lot of community engagement to ensure long-term sustainability. So continuing to support the ongoing needs of the allocating agents, um, exploring, defining, coordinating strategies for discoverability of IGSN IDs, scaling the adoption and use across the samples community uh, and use and this is something that maybe Kirsten will will touch on as well is using a communities a practice approach really develop a community of communities and this is to support and promote the research and innovation for standardized methods uh, to help site uh, identify locate physical samples and there's a number of elements involved in that, you know, ho uh, hosting um, working groups, events, and a knowledge base to foster these uh, communities of practice, uh, developing best practices and, re and recommendations, and um, looking to create core sample descriptive metadata and community extensions. And so then, second part of this this, this talk is really what does this mean for you as, as data site members? And so I'd like to sort of start this by really outlining what, what we're talking about here. What 
dis firstly, what disciplines are we talking about here? Well, very obviously, we, we, we're talking about nat uh, uh, disciplines within the natural sciences, such as the earth, space, environmental sciences, and the biological and life sciences. We're talking within the sphere of social sciences and humanities. We've got uh, anthropology, archaeology. Um, it may be a stretch, but I can personally see that there could be um, some uh, applicability within the arts more generally. Um, and then within the applied sciences, there's, um, you know, it's obviously the agriculture is, is uh, relevant, material sciences and other engineering uh, 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 disciplines will definitely be, be uh, relevant to, to this. So if you're working in one or more of these, then hopefully this is of interest and relevance to you um, and a number of others. And um, in particular, if your user community collects physical samples. So what do we mean by physical samples? Well, physical samples here are rock mineral samples, there's soil sediment cores, there's water quality samples, seed accessions, biodiversity, archaeological artifacts, synthetic materials, human tissue samples, and so on and so forth. And it, it's worth remembering here that we're not just talking about the physical samples or specimens themselves, we're talking about kind of the superset that includes the sampling features. So things such as boreholes um, uh, or uh, wells. Um, and so if, if your community, if you're working with those disciplines and your community is collecting physical samples, then from approximately August of this year, you will be invited to register physical samples through data site that are branded IGSN. We will obviously provide you with guidance on how to do this. Um, and we will certainly be reaching out to you if you've already registered physical objects as a resource type within data site, or if your organization seems very likely to have a user community that collects physical samples. Um, and you will also be given the opportunity to potentially join the I IGSN um, implementation organization and to participate in the main specific communities of practice around um, metadata standardization and so on. And, and one caveat here is it's worth noting is that you may still register physical objects without the IGSN brand. It is, it will, it's not obligatory that everything that is registered um, has to be branded as an IGSN, but we would like to obviously strongly encourage you to do that. And, and why would we want to strongly encourage you to do that? Well, because it gives you the opportunity to label physical samples with an already internationally recognized brand having over 10 years of history. Um, we're hoping that this really will enable physical samples to be more strongly interlinked with other entities in the scholarly literature via the PID graph. At the moment, there is, there's been some difficulty in making sure that physical samples are really treated by publishers um, in, in, in the right way in the citations, and we want to obviously push as a community to correct that. And hope and sort of the bigger picture is really, really making making sure that physical samples become uh, first class research outputs. Um, for members themselves, we uh, will hopefully either connect you or strengthen your ties to other physical sample stakeholders in your domain and also in other communities. It will give you as a member uh, access to and a say in the development of both, both standards and best practice as best practices and solutions to common problems. Um, and it will also allow you um, potentially a more direct route to discuss issues around physical samples with the data site board through the partnership steering group. So thank you very much for listening. I hope that was all clear. I, again, I apologize that I'm not there to answer any questions, but please do, um, if there's anything that my colleagues, uh, Cody and Kirsten, are unable to answer or you would like uh, additional information, please do get in touch through the, the usual channels. So 
thank you very much again. And I hope to speak to you in person uh, next time and soon.